According to the Canadian Energy Centre, Canada's oil and gas sector generates close to $40 billion a year in government revenues, paid to the federal, provincial and municipal levels of government. A big chunk of that is royalty payments, but it also includes things like corporate and payroll taxes paid by the energy companies and their employees, carbon taxes, land sales, as well as fuel surcharges like gasoline taxes. That's the entire oil and gas sector, but what about just the oil sands? Well, the oil sands account for about three quarters of Canada's total oil production, just over three million barrels a day, so it's a huge part of the Canadian energy sector. Oil sands spending totaled almost 800 billion, yes, billion, over the past two decades. That includes capital spending, which would be for building new facilities, day-to-day -day operating costs like maintenance work and employees' salaries, and royalty payments to the province, which are paid on every barrel of oil shipped down the pipeline. And that's just for bitumen production and bitumen upgrading, and doesn't even include the billions spent on supporting industries like pipelines, refineries, or oil storage terminals. It's hard to imagine any private sector industry that even comes close to that level of spending. But let's put all that money aside for a moment. I mean, let's face it, the oil sands are mostly owned by big oil companies who make billions of dollars for their shareholders. But what's in it for the rest of us? Well, a lot, actually, and here are just a few examples. There are an estimated 600,000 Canadians employed in the oil and gas sector. This includes workers directly employed by the energy companies themselves, but also the thousands of companies that provide goods and services to the big energy firms. And most of these companies are small and medium-sized businesses. Yes, many are located in Alberta, but they're also spread out across the rest of Canada and even across the world. Most are independent businesses, small manufacturing plants, some are family run, and many are indigenous owned. And by all accounts, that's a very conservative estimate since it doesn't include the trickle down effect on other industries like research, education, travel, real estate, and consumer spending. It's hard to put an exact number on how many people, families, and businesses owe their livelihood to the Canadian energy patch. Oil sands companies are also one of the largest employers of women in technical and trades positions, and this is an important distinction. For those of us women who love science, enjoy problem solving, or are just more technically or mechanically inclined, the oil sands provide endless opportunities for aspiring engineers, geologists, heavy equipment operators, pipe fitters, welders, field operators, and many other high-paying, high-skilled jobs, opening doors that are traditionally not available to them. And it's not just women that benefit. The oil sands are among the largest employers of new immigrants and indigenous peoples, and even new graduates. Average salaries in the oil patch are much higher than other industries, Many of us got our first big break in the oil sands, and sometimes we end up staying for a lifetime. But let's put all of those jobs aside for a moment. What's in it for the regular Joe who doesn't work in the oil patch? Well, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Canada and the U.S. have a well-integrated oil market. Canada is the largest oil supplier to the U.S., exporting about 4 million barrels a day of crude, mostly from the oil sands. This reduces reliance on foreign oil imports from places like Mexico, Venezuela, and the Middle East, which can be somewhat unstable and subject to the whim of foreign government policy. So the oil sands are a huge part of North American energy security. And that takes us to our last point, and perhaps the most important. The world consumes about 100 million barrels of oil every day, and about 6% of those barrels come from Canada, which is actually a pretty significant number. 
but global oil production capacity is actually much higher than that. Since OPEC is the largest oil producer, accounting for about one-third of world oil output, OPEC and their allies like Russia control the price of crude by throttling production. So every barrel of oil that comes out of Canada displaces production from an OPEC member and its allies. Depending on the price of oil, that's hundreds of billions and even trillions of dollars over time that isn't funding a government regime that has questionable human rights and very little transparency on environmental oversight. And that's why Canadian oil, including the oil sands, matter to the entire free world. Thanks for watching. See you next time.